Hey guys, welcome back to my session in channel Automate Innovation. Today we are going to learn about method overloading in Java. So it's going to be a short tutorial. So let's get started. So I've opened Eclipse and I've created a program method overloading.java. So let's get back and just get it started with this particular class. So I'll be creating an object to this class. Okay, so we've created the object. Now we need to have method overloading concept being implemented. So what is method overloading guys? So method overloading means that a same method is trying to do different actions. So the method would be doing the same action, but it is through different ways. So what do you mean by that? There's something like, uh, if you want to do a summation of two numbers, we can do the summation of maybe two integers, maybe two float, two, two, two double, two long. It will depend upon it could be the action is same, the addition action is same, but only the operands are differing here. The data types are differing. So that is how we can achieve method overloading. So when we are passing the values at runtime, the Java runtime decides, okay, which method to invoke depending upon the data type. So let's take this example and get started. So it's asking us to return the written type as double. So we'll just return the summation. Okay, and now let's do one more thing guys. So let's just try to do summation of maybe three values and let's take different data type now. So now I'll be having the same name of the method. If you see, it's just same name, sum, but it is having different number of parameters or diff see, here three parameters are there. In the previous two methods here, there are two parameters, but the name is same and the return type is different. And if you see, sometimes the data type is changing. Sometimes the number of parameters is changing, but the name of the method is same. So how does the Java interpreter, the runtime interpreter decides which one to call? It is based on the data type passed to the method. So let's invoke the method and let's just see which gets invoked. So what we can do is we can just add a print statement as well, just stating which method we are in. Right, so this will give us an indication as to which method we have landed into. So let's just call this method now. So when we do object dot sum, it's showing us three suggestions. All of them are belonging to the same class. Let's just try to pass some value. Let's say 10.0, 20.0. And let's just invoke now. So remember guys, regarding the data types, integer, double and float, we have covered this in our previous session. So if you have not gone over or you have just started to see this video for the first time, I would advise you to go over my previous video in my playlist of Java and you would be able to understand the different data types and how do we need to declare them. So now we have passed the values and it's going to call the same sub method, but it's just the matter of like which method gets called. Now, one important thing to see here is that we don't have two parameters of float. If you see here, the parameters count as three. So let's just see what happens here. 
right? So when you see this, that the method is not matching to the return types which you have given, then it automatically tries to see which other method is nearest to it. If you see here, double is also kind of a float, but it's the higher precision. It is the one having more space in terms of bytes. Float is the one having lesser precision, right? So if you don't have a method matching to your number of parameters of float, it's going to see the next nearest match and the next nearest match here is double. So it has converted these 2.0 and 3.0 F into double and it has gone into this particular thing. If you wish to print it, we can do the same. And that's it guys. Now we'll just run this program. And now we can see that it is printed and it is also mentioned which type it has gone into. So hope you have got this concept understood now that with method overloading, you can have the different data types with the same name. It could have different return type. The number of parameters could be different. The sequence of parameters could also be different. You could have, let's say int i, maybe float j. And here there might be like, float a and maybe int b. So even the sequence also matters here that if you give this different sequence also it becomes a method overloading. Yeah, I hope this session was useful to you all. If you like this video, just go ahead and subscribe my channel for some more such videos. Stay tuned for the next session. Thank you so much. Bye everyone.